Um, a laser machine, I can tell you 100%, it's being used the whole day through. So I went from not using a laser because I didn't have one, I was thinking about one, to getting a laser, and then now, I mean, 15, 20 times at least throughout the day. It yeah. never stops working. Yeah. So now, of course, we can't have a little interview without talking about Adado. Um, <laughs> so, um, obviously, how, how did you first la learn about the Dado? I'm, I'm in a lucky position where I've been, I've been given the use of a Dado yeah. without having to put any money out. <laughs> I've, I've, I was laser trained uh, 23 years ago on a larger machine. It's about 17 times bigger than this one. <laughs> <laughs> Back when they just started. You yeah, know? yeah, standalone big thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know the ones. Yeah, it takes up a bit of space. Yeah, less than a year I've been playing and fiddling around with it and, and, and yeah. having a go at it. So, um, but I think I picked up on your marketing campaign as it came out in the beginning. You know, so yeah. it definitely caught my attention. From your experience with the Dado, could you briefly describe its features and how it, it, it simplifies certain difficult tasks it makes things flow that's a good way of putting it mm -hmm. because where, where something would have been messier or more time you get into a situation where you simplify things and it just goes smooth mm -hmm. I mean I started off by thinking well you know what I'm going to use it for what's the potential what 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 can this do because I haven't spoken to you about this yet. yeah 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 and um, so I was just messing around with it the first things I started doing was uh, rebuilding of claws for instance I mean, what a game changer, man. <laughs> you have to balance something and create a little thing or use binding wire to get something to be yeah. absolutely precise. So what I'm doing with the Dado is I'm setting up the wires and then I'm still soldering it. Um, you know, with regards to the, the direction, if you want to be absolutely precise, you can tack it at the bottom and you can tack it at the top and you can just fill the bottom up. So you're using, and, and at the moment I'm using both traditional jewelry techniques yeah. as well as the technology. So things mm -hmm. like that came in and then chain fixes opened up to me, which is ridiculous with this yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you've ever done chain fixes, there's, there's you know, this is the, the biggest work that you have involved in, cha in chain fixes is actually cleaning the chain, mm -hmm. where uh, something like this comes in as a treat. And I find also with regards to accessibility, I think I might have spoken to you about that a bit earlier, yeah. but the accessibility, there are areas which are impossible for us goldsmiths to get in with what we have. You almost have to prep your metal beforehand. But if a repair comes in and it has a strange accessibility issue mm -hmm. where there's maybe some sensitive stones or something around, and you just need to get it right there with the uh, accuracy of this thing. It's just absolutely insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you want to mention the shoe? <laughs> Do I want to mention the shoe? I mean, that's, yeah. Oh, it's a Dolce & Gabbana? Yeah. All right, I fixed the shoe this week. A shoe? A Dolce and Gabbana shoe. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's the other thing it does. It, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't have limitations just to, to gold or silver or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are things that you know as a goldsmith, in the past, you have a shoe, right? So a buckle broke. And yeah. it's, a, it's a sentimental, but also expensive set of shoes. Yeah. And at the same time, you would typically, back in the day, there would, there would only be like one or two different options, gluing or maybe lead soldering or something like None of it would, which would hold. Yeah. And um, the moment I got the shoe and I looked at it and I thought, laser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's exactly what it did. There were some paste stones in there. I was working around fabric. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, they, it, it really opens up other areas of, uh, of, of work that you might have not, you know, say you want to move from goldsmithing to shoe repair, for instance. Yeah. Well, there you go. Same, <laughs> strung it over. Laser machine, <laughs> all the way. <laughs> That's a different one. Yeah. <laughs> Let it be noted. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I should contact Dolce & Gabbana about this sort of yeah. work. <laughs> yeah, we converted, very brand of, specific. We, <laughs> we converted a set of, we converted a set of, what were the cufflings? We made them into yeah. earrings and the, the way that they constructed it um, was you, you couldn't get certain things off it. They, they definitely used a laser yeah. to, to put it together. But you, I didn't want to take it apart because of the value of the item. So yeah. we changed it around because of that. Uh, there were pearls in there, for instance. So, you know, they can't take heat. So yeah. immediately, the same thing. Your, your, your head just goes, if you, got, if you know what it does, it becomes an option. Yeah. And if the option is there, then it just makes the job quicker. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it, you know, that relates back to money. So you, you've mentioned some of the jobs that you use the laser for, but what uh, with the Dado, what specific jobs 
um, are you using it for? Retippings. Um, I have used it for sizings. The way that I would approach a sizing before I spoke to you with regards to the little V shape that you would bring mm -hmm. into it is I would something that simplifies the next step for me in what I'm doing. Yeah. So, for instance, we would use solder that go all the way through with the with the 18 karat gold yellow gold ring, for instance. Um, but let's say, for instance, you've got a, a, a bunch of things happening at the top here, mm -hmm. and you have a shank that's maybe a bit thinner. You know, to bend that entire thing into shape sometimes becomes com it compromises some of the stones at the top yeah. or the shape. But with the dado, what I've done is I've actually I could I could take the ring and force it together to touch, tack it, tack it, tack it three times or so, or even the entire outside range, tack it, and then bring that back to the table. Mm -hmm. Whereas previously I would have had to clamp it or get that metal somehow compressed. I put that pressure on the ring in the machine, contact, and then from there onwards turn it around, and do the soldering. So mm -hmm. it, it sets up the next step for me. So I'm yeah. using I'm using the technology currently to sort of assist me. Yeah. and traditional uh, jewelry manufacturing yeah. process. So anything where it can assist me. I was mentioning with a, with a re-tipping, for instance, and the rebuilding of wires and chain fixes and that kind of stuff. That's, that's, that's generally speaking the type of stuff that you would do with it. But there's other things it does as well. Yeah. And so if you, if you sort of weave it into your technique, you can get, you can get a lot more speed and a lot more. I mean, it's a, it's a cleaner process at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah, definitely. You know, you don't have any of that flux you've got to clean off. It's just instant. It's there. Yeah. It's fun stuff, lasers, man. <laughs> <laughs> they are, definitely. Yeah. Um, I was just saying you're working with a laser. Sounds so techy, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's we true. use laser eyes. <laughs> it's, for me, it's... Um, uh, what what do you do? What, what do you do for a job? I, I sell lasers. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you are like, that man. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, I, I've given up trying to give them context because <laughs> just leave it. Always <laughs> I just leave it. I sell lasers. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Space lasers, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They don't need to know what time. <laughs> That's such a futuristic thing. Yeah. Now, some tools come into the industry, and you sort of you you would you would put them there, and you think. Is this going to do something? When I'm going to use it, um, a laser machine. I can tell you 100%. It's being used the whole day through. So I went from not using a laser because I didn't have one. I was thinking about one to getting a laser, and then now, I mean, 15, 20 times at least throughout the day, it yeah. never stops working. Um, what can you say about the quality of repairs on jobs involving laser work? It's flawless. I mean, if you've got everything amplified to that size. And you can physically see what you're doing right there on that yeah. on that small detail. It's better than the eye. Yeah. You know. So if you can working on that macro level and you can and you can see that that metal is joining, and you know that 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 joint is solid, then you can't beat that. It's it's clean. It's uh, it's neat. And if you use the right techniques, it's it's better than solder. Yeah. You know? If you fuse something, yeah, it's a big it's a bold statement. <laughs> If you fuse something rather than soldering something, if you're bringing two metals together, there's, you can't compare it to soldering. There, there's no solder mark. So if you, if you master this machine, you're going to sit with a better product towards the customer at the end of the day. And you yeah. can argue that. I'm arguing that. <laughs> Fight me on that. <laughs> Change my mind. <laughs> can't say I disagree. <laughs> Do you see a potential in earning more while shifting more weight to the laser? Uh, by speeding up workflow in other ways. Yeah, any tool, any tool. If yeah. you bring in the, the, the right tool into a workshop that makes things smoother and quicker and you know, easier to, to do, absolutely. It's always a, a, a consideration for any workshop of, of investment and how, you know, what kind of return you're gonna get from it. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at something like this, if, you, if you're not just using it for fun um, and, and, it, and it has a purpose, this machine will definitely pay for itself. Yeah. So once it's paid for itself, uh, you know, it's just going to translate into your profits. So there's no, I mean, there's, there's, there's really, really no comparison to a workshop with or a workshop without it. Yeah. You can't compete. Let's say, for instance, you, you're trying to compete. You're not going to be able to compete if, you're, if your competitor has got mm -hmm. a blazer. So it's a, bit of a, it's, a, it's a bit of a stretch for some people, especially if you're working small scale. Mm -hmm. and I've certainly been very lucky to have that given to me. Um, but at the end of the day, when it comes down to, to functionality, there's, I mean, we have to move with the times. Yeah. And, and laser does what, it's, what it says on the box, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, certainly. <laughs> in what ways has the Dado influenced your creative freedom and experimentation in jewelry design? 
You work towards an end goal. As a goldsmith, you visualize ahead, and there's certain steps that you get to, to get to this final product. It takes basic skills, eliminates them, and it puts more focus on the next thing. So creatively, it might open up a little bit more space to think about the next step because you're not thinking about the previous one. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult, like, esoteric thing I'm talking about right now, no. but that's how I see it anyway. It's all a process from A to Z, and if you can shorten that process, you still have the same amount of creativity, but it has to spread into the rest of the stuff. So you might be spending a bit more time on, on finishing, you might be spending a little bit more time on thinking about the next approach you've got, mm -hmm. because you've just saved 15, 20 minutes on, on what you were doing over there. Do you have any advice for aspiring goldsmiths looking to incorporate the data into their workflow, and would you recommend it? Do it. Yeah, no, absolutely. If you've got, um, if, if if you get to the point where you're wondering about it, then I would. Uh, if you ask my opinion personally, again, I've worked before and I've worked after lasers. It's a machine that gets a lot of use. You you find purpose with it the whole time. Plus, it's fun. Yeah. Where can we find you <laughs> on, online? Well, I'm um, in England. Yeah, um, that's good. Like in, on Earth. <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, yeah, Yucca the Jeweler is basically what you've got to look for. You can find it on, uh, I mean, you, know, you can type that into Google, I'm sure it will throw you out in any of these places. Yeah. We do commissions for uh, uh, private commissions as well. We do a lot of work with some of the local retailers as well to help them out. We're just generally trying to be open to the trade. Yeah. So um, any, any of those areas, I think we're on TikTok as well. We are. We're on TikTok as well. Well, there we go. Yeah. Demaya does my social media, so you best, best ask her in one of the comments. <laughs> Demaya, could you please let us know where else we can find it? No, you'll find me, and from there you'll, you'll be able to link me to the next place. So thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the thank you. Good stuff. Sorted. And thanks for all the uh, coffee and cinnamon rolls. Yeah, yeah. Those right. rolls We've had a good time here. Yeah. It's good stuff, man. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. It helps. I was explaining to Demaya, this is a good place to work. <laughs> <laughs>